Hi there, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay video at keepsakecrafts.net. Today I'm going to show you how you can make molds of found objects and use those molds to make custom little artworks that you can use as jewelry or home deck. So here I have a selection of just a few things that you could use to make molds and make really pretty polymer clay pieces by just impressing those molds into some clay and then adding decorative elements such as this one. This one was a surprise. The feather turned out to be one of my favorites. And I'll show you just how to do this. It all begins with something that you're going to make an impression of. It can be something from nature like shells or feathers or rocks or I love these little starfish. It can be something you've found like these metal gears or charms. You can make a mold of and then use it in an impression to make really nice polymer clay pendants or pieces for anything you want. In order to make the molds, I like to use this silicone molding putty. It comes in two parts, and I've done a whole video on using this, and I'll have a link to that in the description box, and also you'll find it if you click on the upper right of the video up here. There will be a link to my video on molding putty. But basically, you mix equal parts of each of the two different parts. But before you start mixing, you want to make sure that you have your pieces ready. Now I like to use a smooth ceramic tile to mold my pieces on. That way I have a nice flat background for my pieces. And I'll give you an example here. Here are some gears that I've prepared for making a mold. And because I was afraid they'd slip around and I kind of wanted them in a particular configuration, I used some repositionable adhesive. Just put a bunch down, stuck the gears down. And this is what the final mold looks like. So if you're doing anything that is going to be have a flat backing like the gears or the little turtle or a starfish, you can just lay those on the tile. And that will give you one kind of look. There are some things that are three-dimensional like this shell and it doesn't have a flat back. And that's going to give you a rather different kind of look. Here's a mold that I made from this shell. And here's the impression that I ended up getting from this shell. Now here's the impression I ended up getting from the starfish. And you can see the difference here. The starfish, the clay around it has much more crisp edges. And this one, they're kind of soft and roundy. And again, with the gears, which had a flat background, you can see you've got nice crisp edges here, as opposed to kind of a more rounded edge. Because when I pushed the piece into the molding putty to make my impression, it pushes it up around the edges here. And so that's why you have that kind of soft, smooth edge. So I'm going to make a mold of this little turtle because I think he's really cute. And I'm first going to cut off this loop because I don't want that to be part of my mold. And even though the head isn't perfectly smooth now, I can smooth that out after molding. Remember, you're molding clay, so you can always make adjustments afterwards. So I'm going to get out of one of the parts of molding putty about half as much as I think I'll need to cover my piece because remember we're mixing two parts together. You roll each of them into a ball and then you can compare the sizes and eyeballing it is fine. This molding putty doesn't require so much precision. I've never had it fail even though I've always eyeballed it. So then you just start mixing it until you end up with a uniform color. And you do want to be kind of quick. To do all these molds that I've shown you, I used a rather large chunk. And by the time I got to this one, you can see the edges are a little ragged and wobbly. It was starting to set up on me. In fact, you could see it's kind of rounded and I had to sort of rock it to get my impression. Uh, because it was starting to kick off and set up. So mix up enough for one or two molds at a time. You don't want to risk wasting it. So once you get a uniform color, you want to roll it in your hands and get a really nice smooth ball. You don't want any creases because those will just become part of your mold. And then I've got my piece here and I'm going to press right down on it. You don't want to press too hard so that you have a really thin spot, but I'm going to press all around 
so that I have plenty of flat area around it. And then we'll just let that set up. It takes maybe 15-20 minutes to set up. You'll be able to tell when you stick your fingernail in and a dent, you can see I tested that one, and a dent doesn't stay, then you know it's set up. So here are a few of the other molds I've made. Uh, you can see there's mostly a beach theme going on here because it's spring here in New England and I'm so happy for the warm weather to come back. This is a feather, of course some steampunk gears, shells, starfish. This one was a little disappointing. I thought it would look really cool to have the tip of this shell showing and have kind of that spiral pattern, but when you impress it, it sort of looks like a nipple. <laughs> so not really the look I was going for. But let me show you how you can use these. So let's grab one. I like this starfish one. Like I said, I like to work on a tile. And I have here a nicely conditioned piece of clay. And you want to roll it out into a smooth ball, just like with the putty. You don't want to have any creases or cracks showing because those will show on your finished project. I'm going to flatten it out a little bit just into sort of a, a pebble shape. One thing that looks really nice is just to have a partial impression. So have some of it hanging off. Then you can put it on your tile and press it down. You can stand up and press on it well. I like to use an acrylic block and that helps you, especially with the shallower impressions like the gears or especially the feather, that helps you to get all the detail. I know that's kind of nice. And remember with the turtle how I pressed the molding putty quite a distance from the object, from the turtle, because I wanted to have a bit of area to work in around it, because where this ends, you end up with this kind of soft edge, which is a little thicker, which is fine. Once you've reached this point, you can do all sorts of things with it. This would be pretty with turquoise on the starfish. But I've kind of been using turquoise on everything lately. And by the way, if, uh, if you're interested in the supplies I'm using, make sure that you click on the little I or the tag in the upper right of the video or the link in the description box to go to my blog post. Every video I make has an accompanying blog post where I will always have a complete supply list and links to products. That's the question you guys ask me the most, so make sure that you click on those places and find those resources I've put together for you. So then you can just start playing, adding things, add a stringing hole or not. This one, I wasn't sure how well the feather was going to come out, but with a very light touch with the perfect pearls on this lavender clay, it's really quite gorgeous. And you could see how interesting the partial impression looks, even though I did impress the entire feather. And then I just picked a couple accent colors, a dark and light turquoise and some opal clay, and just made spirals and swirls and embedded in a bird charm and shells and things and just made really a really pretty piece that you can it's just a nice foundation you can see how I'm starting to build something similar here this one was just the gears and I went over with uh, bronze and copper and the green perfect pearls and I could have added other things to this. Here's our little turtle mold all done and again I'll just kind of make a shape that I like. Press that down, use my acrylic block to get a really nice deep impression and see what we've got. And you know what's awesome? If you don't like it you can peel it up and do it again. And remember those little bits of the loop that I clipped off that kind of was still showing? You can just use, I just use my fingernail, but you could use a ball tool or whatever you have to kind of sculpt those out. Okay, I'm kind of liking that better than when I first unmolded it, I wasn't sure. <laughs> and if you don't like it, like I said, roll it up in a ball, try again with a different shape molding your piece onto a different part. That's kind of fun, huh? So I hope this video has given you some ideas for how you can make impressions of found or household objects and then make yourself wonderful little polymer clay works of art with mixed media. 
So if you like this video, uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe to see more like it. I upload new tutorials every Tuesday and Friday. Be sure to take a peek at my Patreon page if you haven't already for how you can get great rewards and help support these tutorials. Happy creating. Bye-bye.